Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series, where over the next few videos I'm going to be taking a closer look at intervals. If you're working towards an ABRSM grade or you want to find some further examples to work on, I cover this topic in various videos for the ABRSM grades 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in increasing difficulty. And you can find the links to those videos relating to intervals in the cards and also in the description below. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDFs and you can download those in US letter or A4 and they've got all the information that you need for those grades. You can also find links to the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day when you're working through your paper. If you can give me a like, that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And now we're going to have a look at the intervals of a fifth. Now fifths, like fourths and octaves, are referred to as perfect intervals. There's no major or minor form of those. The reason for that um, originates from the medieval period, where in medieval music, fourths, fifths and octaves were classed as the purest of notes, the purest of intervals, and uh, they were referred to as perfect consonants. Later on, uh, later investigation has shown that the quality of the note is reflected in the fact that the frequency of the sound waves is, re is represented by a simple whole number rather than um, complicated fractions of waves. It's a, a pure sound with a whole number. By the 1600s, fourths, fifths and octaves were considered to have a bare open sound because of that very pure tone it sounds quite bare and open and other intervals in harmony became more favoured and so instead of referring to them as perfect consonants we now refer to it as a perfect interval just because of the pure harmonic frequency and so now we call them perfect intervals there's no major or minor version however we can adjust um, by semitones and we can um, still extend and shrink those intervals as we will see. So let's start off with a basic perfect fifth. So in its an unaltered form, this is a perfect fifth. And we can see that we've counted from C all the way up to G, C, D, E, F, G. So you can see we've gone through one, two, three, four, five steps. And if you count that up, line, space, line, space, line, always counting the lowest note as number one, we can see that we've counted up five. So that's our perfect. Now if we want to shrink that, we no longer go to major or minor, we just go straight to diminished. And in order to do that, if we look at how we can do that, we can go from C to G, that's perfect. So if we lower that top note to G flat, we've diminished that interval by a semitone. So let's just give ourselves the perfect to start, C to G. And then if we lower this G by a semitone and give it a G flat, that has now been made smaller. We've diminished that interval. And so that is now a diminished fifth. We can also do the same. Let's just get ourselves a few more examples ready. So there's our perfect fifth, C, D, E, F, G. And so we can also make this smaller. Instead of by changing the top note, so instead of some C to G and changing the top note, we'll go from C to G and we'll change the bottom note. And if we raise the bottom note by a semitone to C sharp, we've still made that small interval. We've made it smaller by a semitone, we've diminished it. And so C sharp, to G is also a diminished fifth. There we go. And so now we can extend that perfect interval. And so we're starting with the perfect interval C to G. And if we extend that top note, raise it up, we open the interval out, we make it bigger, we augment it. So G sharp gives us an augmented fifth from C. So C to G sharp, 
gives us an augmented fifth because we've made it bigger we've augmented it by a semitone and then again we can augment the interval by lowering the next the, the lowest note so C to G is our perfect fifth and if we just extend that by lowering the bottom note to a C flat then that will give us an augmented fifth as well so C flat don't fall into the trap of thinking that's gone to a B because that's not the case we're still on the C line here it's represented as a note C we've still only got those five steps up the ladder we're enharmonically changing that to a C flat we're just giving it a different name because it's the C that we're altering it's the C that we're changing so again, that's an augmented fifth. Oh, that went a bit wonky. There we go. And so that's the intervals of a fifth. Hopefully that's helped you to clarify the topic of intervals of a fifth. If you want to find more practice in this subject, you'll find links in the description below and also in the cards to all of the various videos that um, I've done covering this topic. Do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resources and information there that's available to help you. Please give me a like, that would be really fab. And do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.